Hello and welcome to the Iceman channel. It's been a while, but I have something new for you. I was over at SaneCon some weeks ago and I was approached by one member of the community asking me if I've ever looked into the bamboo 3D filament DRM tags. And I said, no, I haven't. So he gave me one extracted from his spool. So this video is gonna be about that. Tag along. If you look at this little spool thing here, this is extracted. Imagine the spool sitting in the middle here. Boop. They have two individual separate RFID tags on the side of it. So you need to recover both of those to see with the data on it. I'm very curious on it, with it. And I'm going to put it on my little trusty Proxmox like that, maybe. Maybe I'm going to put it like this, maybe. I don't know. Does that work better? Let's leave it. Let's see if that works. Let's see if that works. Go for the Siggy. Let's enter the Proxmox world. I am running the latest source as usual. So I ran this against this tag before, and it is a my fair classic tag. I can swap over so we try the second side. And you see that it is also my fair classic. You can see here that the UID is the same. I have a base thing here, but otherwise they're different. So it's two individual tags, they're not connecting with each other. And uh, yeah, let's see what 14A info says. Mifer Classic, heading over to the Mifer Info command, which tries something out, and it tells me that it's one of those new food and 11 RF08S tags that are suspicable to suspicable suspicable to uh, Dojox, uh, Philip Turban's uh, new attack recovery things. But we go with Trusty All Auto Pawn first to see what's going on. A hint is that it says static encrypted none, so I shouldn't actually be running Auto Pawn against this one because it will fail. But I was wanted to see if I have any data on it that I recognized. And now it's dark side and it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna break out the client, bring out everything because it's not gonna work. Go back into the Proxmark again, and since we have that, I can do MFF check, see if any default key check. Thank you. Uh, default keys works. Let's take this command here and run because it terrorize all the known default keys that we have available and some there are at least two three hundred keys in that dictionary that is uh, not uh, default they are diversified like hotel keys and we don't have a UID for it so it's, yeah it needs to clean out this file a little bit so actually Strange enough, with the impact of a flipper zero, more and more default keys are being exposed. So that's fun. I will speed up this part of the video because it will take time. So normally when you end up in a situation, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Normally when you end up in a situation where your uh, tag that's an answer to my fair auto pawn. You don't have any default keys. You kind of screwed before, uh, especially with food on cards because they have static encrypted nonsense. The only way you could do it was to be sniffing. So you would have to take your Proxmark and then you would sniff uh, in your 3D printing, the bamboo printer, and try to extract the key material that way in order to get a key out. And that is what that member told me that they had done. They have sniffed it and they were trying to figure out the KDF because all of the tags that they've been looking at has individual keys, which means there's no default keys, so even more screwed. I'm running this and here 
back to this one again still because i want you to see what it looks like when you run it 70 percent and i think i'm just gonna break it i think i wonder if we can break it i hope we can yes aborted via the keyboard so now what to do if you don't have a default key and you don't know the kdf and you know nothing normally you would have been screwed but since philip turvin was doing his things he has added his new script and it's called recovery and also mf backdoor dump so we can try and run this one first script this is python script and let's see what it says all right and none of the backdoor tag seems to work with this tag all right that's not a good thing let's go for this one here and i think we do this and we will just look this right all right, so this one works much better. It makes me a dump file first for uh, the initial backdoor commands that is available to read out all the data we tag. So already by now we have fast dumped all the data that was stored on the card. So that's good. We don't have keys yet, but that is what's going to happen now. It takes about 12 minutes to run. So I will speed up this part of the video as well for you this will not have taken more than a couple of seconds for me it will take about 12 minutes all right it's in this last couple of keys to find on sector sector 15. i had to restart it all and remove some uh, uh, temporary files some dictionary files that this script made and it's because <laughs> as those have noticed a little bit more i have to tape down the the chip on the reader because it got a bad um coupling and that's why it couldn't collect nouns very good so that's something to consider that this script doesn't give you that output warnings anyway uh we're just waiting for the last keys to be cracked or recovered and there we go we got all the keys you can see all generated from different ways so it's a kdf here that is not done yet or figured out and we can actually watch or look in this Oop. file now to look at the data whoa strict read only access conditions detected so this whole tag is locked down interesting here's the keys and here is all the data that was on this tag and by just the get-go of it you can see that there is pla basic there's a date here and then a lot of random data now normally i would have been I would have been like, ah, cool. Let's uh, let's make a decoder for this because it looks like this is, uh, you know, some clear text strings there. And when I was trying to make this video a week ago, we got a pull request, and uh, that pull request actually has a decoder. So let me show you that. Um, this is kind of fun in that sense. <laughs> So if the one who uh, the one who was taking notice before script uh, list also made notice of this Python script up here. So if we run that one with dash H, it actually also decodes bamboo tags, which we happen to have. And we also take uh, recovering off this um, this food and s serrates s um, keys now the best thing with this script is actually that it sees tries to look at the uid see if it's a key file if it's a key file and it's not a key file it tries to read out the memory just like dojox data does 
uh, script, he reads out uh, all the this is the keys from a data to load block from from the hidden backdoor keys, or the, he called the dark keys up name. This is the keys that we had before because we had a key file. So this one is a little bit more descriptive and it's all all shout out to to blue chips who made this uh, script. Uh, it's a kind of fun script. They made it for for a RFID capture of a flag challenge, and uh, they explain a lot of things what's going on here a little bit more than the other thing does. Here you can do a validator, so you can actually call that RFID UIVS.coms and see what uh, if it's a genuine tag or not. Here it tries to read out all the key files. It reads out all the blocks. This is the backdoor key that is used. And you see here, it also tries to read way out of my fair classic 1K memory range and read the hidden blocks that is there on this food and card. This is part of uh, Philip Turvin's research paper. So you should read that in order to understand more what's going on there. So we got all that data now into the dump. And here, try to do this, but it failed because it tries to use a. Uh, it tries to add a. Uh, okay, so this is Vasquez signs that's not decoded properly. We added some colors to his script, so yeah. Anyway, but you see the same thing here. But card data, you see the data that comes out of here. Boop, boop, boop. But the best thing is not this. This is the very hard read access, like we had in that script before. The access right for the for the tag is kind of locked down. It doesn't say very much more. It's a little bit too much information for me. But here is the interesting part. There is a bamboo 3D printer decoder built in. I don't decompose this. I would call it decoder. Decoder. So it says what it is. And it saves me a lot of things because all of a sudden we, you can look at this tag and go like, huh, unique material identifier. This is filament type, PLR, basic. How much is the spool weight? Uh, the colors, the temperatures, everything is there. It's all figured out. I'm great. This should be able to you know, add a decoder of this bamboo tags into the Proxmox native clients instead of this. And that would be cool. And you also have a hash box here. Now, when you look at this, um, let's go for browser, shall we? Uh, yep. If you look at the script in the client in Proxmox world, it is down here. Full this one. And you go down to bamboo, detect bamboo. That's how it does it. It has an actual list. Here's the dump of it. So you want to see how it dumps all out that data. But it has a link to a Bamboo Research Group that there is actually public knowledge about this, which is great. And you don't have to figure out things. So if you go there, you see this nice little tag or this guide that explains everything about the blocks and what we've done and not done and how we did it. Look here where you see the, the readers are built into the 3D printer. And I think this is just great. They say how to recover the keys here from different versions of it, which we don't need now because we can use this food on recovery. But what it says about the last six blocks down here is that there is an RSA 2048 signature. It means that you can manipulate any of his data here because you will not be able to regenerate a valid signature. The question is, of course, if a 3D printer reads this signature or not, I don't know. And I'm pretty sure that we take all the blocks that is used and then we calculate this in it. You can make a complete copy of this tag and by using a magic tag and we talk about it later on as well and what works and not works uh, mm -mm. here and say which one works not compatible for gen 1 gen 2 works and then try this one's here so yes this is cool. You can add your own knowledge. You can see the, how we're doing it here in the Proxmog Python world. And we can see the data here as well. And yeah, 
I don't have to do anything else than just look at this tag and go. That was cool. That's interesting. This little thing here. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's it's kind of cool that they already put in some effort. I like this when people put some effort into understanding the DRM on tags like this, and because eventually maybe you can uh, you know, liberate those tags from the DRM and make some alternatives, so you can use your pyre, you know alternative filaments to run in your bamboo 3D printer. Uh, all options to the consumer, I guess. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think about it. And if you use a 3D print yourself and if you have any more of this uh, filaments and you play with, maybe you can improve the tags, I don't know. F please like and subscribe and you know, take care.